So today I want to talk about the magic of this parse expression function. Um, and we'll come back to why this is useful. R has this thing called lazy evaluation. And what that means is that when you do a function like this, or a set of pipes like this, start with the patient's data frame, then group by pay type, then summarize n equals n to count the rows, you're actually typing out the word pay type. And in most programming languages, you would have had to put pay type in quotes because pay type doesn't exist as a global variable. It exists as a column inside of the patient's data frame. In tidyverse in particular, the expectation is that you're never going to type any variables in quotes. You're always going to type them out like I have here. So what if you had a character type variable? Uh, let's say it was called grouping that contained the value pay type in quotes. So how would I make this variable? I could just type in my, you know, our notebook grouping equals pay type in quotes. Would this code still work? So if you look carefully, the only change I've really made in this code is that I swapped out group by pay type with group by gr the grouping, which is that grouping variable. Uh, notice that the grouping variable uh, does not exist inside of the patient's data frame. That doesn't mean I can't access it, but just letting you know, uh, it's not inside the patient's data frame. It's a separate variable. So if you type this code, you'll get an error and it won't work. The reason it won't work is that dplyr or tidyverse will look for a variable named grouping in the data frame. Um, and when this is not found, it will result in an error. And the error you get is error column grouping is unknown. When we put pay type here, it was no problem because dplyr was able to find the variable pay type. However, when we put grouping here, dplyr doesn't realize that what you want it to do is not to use the column name grouping, but rather to look inside the value of the grouping variable, which is pay type, and then to group by that variable instead. So instead of typing patients, then group by, then summarize n equals n, what you have to do is tell uh, dplyr explicitly that it's not the grouping variable you want it to look at. It's the value inside of the grouping variable that you want it to look at. And that value, rem remember, is uh, pay type in quotes. So you wanted to use that that variable inside of the grouping uh, variable, or the value inside the grouping variable. But also, you want to get rid of those quotes. Because just like how this doesn't work, uh, the code that I've shown here, if you did group by with pay type in quotes, that also wouldn't work. So similarly, you have to tell it to get rid of those quotes. And the parse expression function can turn a character string into written code as if you had typed it out. So if you replaced patients, then group by grouping, then summarize n equals n with patients, then group by parse expression grouping, then summarize n equals n, what this would tell dplyr to do is to look at the value inside of the grouping variable, which is pay type in quotes, to actually type in pay type, uh, removing those quotes, and pretend you had, you know, just had group by pay type, which was that first piece of code that we had, which worked. And this code right here would actually give you the intended result. So if you type this in, you would get back a data frame with two columns, pay type and n, which has the counts of each of the different types of pay type. So I recognize that this function is challenging and confusing, but the main purpose of the parse expression function is when you have access to some kind of variable or arbitrary R code that's inside of a character vector or a character string variable, in order to get 
that ve- that information out of a character string and pretend as if you had typed it in yourself into the screen, you have to use parse expression. In most of your workflow, this is not something you'll have to do. But if you were to make the grouping variable interactive later in this lecture, where you wanted the user to be able to select a grouping variable and for the grouping to automatically change on your screen, you'd have to uh, parse the expression of the input that they provide, which is a character string, and turn it into uh, something that's actually typed in uh, onto your screen. And you're not going to be able to physically you know, sit by your computer and type in every different column that they select. You'll want to make that process automatic. And the way that typing in happens uh, is through the parse expression function. And as a reminder, in order for this to work, you have to have library rlang. If you're still looking at this and a little bit puzzled, uh, I would say, let's move on. Uh, we'll come back to this when we talk about interactive documents. And hopefully when you see this again, it'll make a little bit more sense uh, what purpose this serves. So what, what were to happen if we were to redefine grouping? So for example, in the last example, we had assigned the value pay type to the grouping variable. What if I wanted to run that same code after reassigning uh, grouping to have a value of sex in quotes? So this code would also work um, as intended because what's happening here is that when I say patients then group by parse expression grouping, that parse expression grouping is putting in the word sex in quotes in this space, then removing those quotes. And so it looks to R as if I had typed out patients, then group by sex, then summarize N equals N. Uh, and if I had typed that out, this is the result I would get. So I still get the correct result when I redefine the grouping variable. And as I alluded to earlier, here we're manually redefining it, but later in this lecture, we'll have uh, a user interactively redefine this by selecting it from a drop-down menu, for example. Let's say we wanted to filter patients to only include those patients over 65. So we start with a variable filter criteria, and we assign it the value age greater than 65 in quotes. How could we filter by filter criteria? So we could start with patients, then filter, filter criteria, but this wouldn't work. And the reason this wouldn't work is that this is the equivalent of typing in patients, then filter age greater than 65 in quotes. And since you can't have age greater than 65 in quotes uh, in dplyr, this code wouldn't work. So to make dplyr think that we actually had typed in patients then filter age greater than 65 without quotes, we have to parse the expression filter criteria, which just tells R, pretend we had typed in the age greater than 65 and get rid of the quotes. Uh, 